Thank you for joining us. I'm John Beard. Libby has the night off. We're going to begin tonight with a possible rate hike for many of you. A driver survives with only minor injuries after plunging his car off a 100-foot Iowa bluff. And yes, he said he needs more cowbell. Round of applause now for Mark Prater for today's um, weather. Soak it. soak it up, Mark. If I were the CEO of Microsoft and somebody started egging me, <laughs> I would take out a wad of $100 bills and just start wiping it off with that. <laughs> Police on the scene today tell us they're glad this didn't happen last week when the late summer heat we were feeling was have been baking these guts. The National Weather Service says the Iowa River could hit 32 and a half feet by Sunday. The old record just 28 feet. That even in spring training, playing the Royals is a great way to get well. <laughs> Thank you, Roland. We'll be right back. Good evening. I'm John Beard. And I'm Libby Allison. Thank you for joining us. We begin tonight with the fight against a hike and how much you pay for water. Iowa American wants to charge more. Here are the numbers. For residents, raise the rate nearly 31%. That would mean the average bill would jump from about 24 bucks a month to 3150 For public authorities, it would climb about 29.5%. That means it would go from $208 to 270 Tonight, the Davenport City Council adopted a resolution to to oppose this increase. Iowa American says its rates are based on actual costs and a return on its investment. Mayor Gluba says at a time when the economy is poor, no one can expect a return on their investment. Alderman Bill Lynn first opposed the resolution but then changed his mind. Alderman Barney Barnhill will present the resolution at tomorrow night's public forum in Bettendorf. It will be at Scott Community College Student Life Center, room 2300. All are welcome to attend. Time now for a first look at the forecast. And Pat, hopefully we'll have another day like today. A former Muscatine County judge pleads guilty to his third DUI. Police arrested 55-year-old James Weaver in March. His blood alcohol content was double the legal limit. Weaver will be sentenced August 6th. He faces up to five years in prison. Governor Pat Quinn is looking into a possible admission scam at the University of Illinois. The school is accused of admitting unqualified students when their parents had political connections, admitting them ahead of qualified kids. Quinn appointed an independent State Commission to investigate. The investigation should wrap up in two months. Well, this weekend marks the 20th anniversary of the Quad Cities Race for the Cure. Good evening and welcome to the 9 o'clock news. I'm John Beard. Libby has the night off. We begin with the long wait for your tax return. The Illinois General Assembly is set to adjourn for the summer this Sunday, and the state is still without a balanced budget. Governor Pat Quinn and other lawmakers are trying to close an $11 million gap. This is a major concern for at least one Quad Cityan still waiting on tax money owed to him by Illinois. First on Fox, Kurt Liske has more. The Illinois Department of Revenue says it expects to issue more than 6 million refund checks this year, and at this point, there are still about 500,000 checks that have not been sent out. Well, the next few days will probably mark the end of General Motors as we know it. It's looking like the company will file for bankruptcy on Monday. That was the government-imposed deadline for the automaker to either restructure or file. GM's board will meet tonight and tomorrow to talk about Chapter 11 bankruptcy plans. A deal reached yesterday with bondholders and the Treasury Department is unlikely to stop bankruptcy at this point. Closer to home, one of GM's most anticipated products debuted today. The 2010 Chevy Camaro arrived at Lujax. It's the first new model of the classic muscle car since 2002, and the Quad Cities Camaro Club brought in all five generations of the Camaro to Lujax. General Manager Dave Wayne expects this Camaro to transcend the likely GM bankruptcy. Cool. All right. Thank you, Pat. Uh, one person has died after an accident yesterday afternoon in Comanche. Police say 47-year-old Teresa Hines was driving south on US 67 and rear-ended another car. She then swerved into the northbound lane, hitting another vehicle. Hines died at the scene. Two other people were hurt. Their conditions are not known. Davenport police are investigating a stabbing. Police say 35-year-old Montreal Ryan was stabbed in the chest and back during a fight on Esplanade Avenue last night. Ryan was treated at a hospital and then released. Police say he and his wife are not cooperating with them in this investigation. Police chase a gunman after he hijacks a school bus near Chicago. The hijacker led police through several suburbs for about 45 minutes before police arrested him in Glenwood. The bus rammed several cars and several shots were fired. Officers say no children were on the bus. Some 
people, however, inside those rammed cars did suffer injuries. If you have some recycling to do this weekend, the Quad Cities Children's Therapy Center is looking for you. You can donate your refundable cans and bottles to the therapy center. They will take the recyclables, collect the deposit, and use the money to provide speech, physical, and occupational therapy to area children. Fox 18 is a proud sponsor of this event. Donations can be made all weekend long at any of six hy grocery stores in the Iowa Quad Cities. 100% of the proceeds will benefit area children. And area Shriners are also putting out the call to area children in need. The Shriners have scheduled a screening tomorrow for children with health problems. The Shriners operate more than 20 hospitals nationwide and offer no-cost health care to families who qualify. Tomorrow's screening is scheduled for 9 until noon. It will take place at the Shriners Center. That is at 511 East 65th Street. You are encouraged to bring any medical records possible. Keeping your good name and information safe. How the president plans to do just that. Plus, be careful what you Twitter. How one man found out the hard way. And easing H1N1 flu fears with a vaccine. When that vaccine could be ready. All the news you need to know will continue right here on Fox 18. If you miss the basket, if you don't put it in there, the eyes get really bright red and fire shoots out the mouth. It's pretty oh, scary. It's okay. got a new way to teach people how to how to put the litter where it belongs. Yeah, Let's talk about mind. the weather, Pat. A beautiful day today. Unfortunately, it looks like it's not going to last. Yeah, there's a little chance of rainfall for tomorrow. 65. Yeah, several mornings in the 40s right there. So Yeah, early start. Maybe yeah, needed a little jacket. Spring kind of hangs on a little bit before we get to summer. All right, thank you, Pat. Roland's talking state track finals up next. And the Wheelers, ownership issues aside for, for now. Now, just playing ball tonight. Sports is next. And if you have a news tip, let us know about it by sending it to fox18news at klgb.com. Again, Roland is up next. Bush should get a sponsor where he gets to wear black because he likes to, likes to wear the black hat. You know, he He's likes to be the, the bad enemy. guy. enemy. You yeah. can see that race, by the way, right here in Fox. Fox Sunday. 18. All right. Thank yeah. you, Roland. Final look at your forecast is coming up, plus sweet incentive for one chicken to cross the road. The 9 o'clock news comes right back. It's been a long road to get here. We have lots to get to in our You Decide 2008 election night coverage this evening. Millions of people still heading out to the polls and millions of ballots are being counted where the polls have already closed. This is the view around the Quad Cities earlier today. Voting is over in both Illinois and Iowa. The polls just closed in Iowa. Two hours ago, they closed in the state of Illinois. First on Fox, we are going to begin with the big one, the presidential race. And we have two graphics we want to show you. The first one is the popular vote. When we went to air, Obama... 50% of the popular vote, McCain 49%. While this is important in terms of electing a president, it means next to nothing because it's the electoral college that really counts. And if we take a look at that one, you will see Senator Barack Obama from the state of Illinois with 200 electoral college votes, Senator McCain of Arizona 90. Uh, both candidates need to get to 270 to win this election. Obama just captured the state of Ohio, which was considered critical for a McCain victory. Obama also picked up Pennsylvania earlier, another key state. Votes. But the traffic flow of voters was not the same as it was during early voting. Volunteers say they expected to see a rush both in the morning and in the evening, but that rush at the end never really happened. This is North Scott High School during rush hour, if you can call it that. Not much wait for voters there. Fox 18's Kimberly Brown has more on lines or lack thereof at the polls. Well, right now, election officials are counting your ballots in Scott County and around the state of Iowa. We're going to move on and, and get with Pat later. This is a uh, long Long lines in the state of California today. Voters had to endure them all day long in many, many states. Obama's victory in the state never been in doubt, but excited voters are still turning out, waiting in lines that stretch for blocks in some cases. A record 13.6 million people are expected to turn out across that state. High voter turnout recorded everywhere. Yeah, no it's nice to see. Yeah, no matter who wins, who you vote for, it's exactly. nice when everybody gets out there and votes and we have a true indication of what the nation truly wants. And before we let you go, we want to show you Grant Park in Chicago. 70,000 people expected inside the park, maybe a million outside to hear Barack Obama speak tonight. Will it be an acceptance speech or will it be something else? Uh, they're hoping for the acceptance speech in Chicago tonight. A lot of Obama supporters out there. Stay tuned. We are going to be right back. All right. Well, we are going to update some of those Illinois races coming up. And if we're lucky, we'll have some results from Iowa as well. Election numbers. Yeah, the crew feverishly trying to find new numbers for us. <laughs> Let's take a look at the uh, federal numbers on uh, the federal races in the uh, 
the state of Iowa. Senator Tom Harkin declared the winner. Uh, he will be the uh, first Democratic senator to serve a fifth term for the state of Iowa. Uh, we also want to mention that Fox News has declared Barack Obama the winner in both the state of Illinois, his home state, mm -hmm. and the state in of Iowa. Iowa as well. The McCain campaign was holding out hope they could uh, win in Iowa. They mm -hmm. thought they had some internal polling that showed they had a chance. But Obama uh, declared the winner early uh, in the state of Iowa. Uh, also, he won in Ohio and Pennsylvania earlier yes. in the night. It's good news for those people in Grant Park we saw earlier. Pat, no good news for people as we uh, get later oh. in the week. It's going to get cold. <laughs>